Imagine a wall standing in front of you. Is it possible to pass through it like a ghost? It sounds like a fantasy, but this year's Nobel Prize in Physics has made it a reality. Passing through walls is commonplace for microscopic quantum particles, and scientists have successfully taught a macroscopic object composed of billions of atoms this ability. As early as 1911, Dutch scientist Heinrich Onnes discovered that when mercury is cooled to near absolute zero, its electrical resistance disappears. Electric current can flow eternally, but resistance can only decrease infinitely. How could it possibly disappear out of thin air? This sudden transformation can only be a genuine quantum miracle manifested on a macroscopic scale. Later theories of superconductivity showed that, within a superconductor, electrons would pair up, forming Cooper pairs, and coalesce into a single, perfectly synchronized superparticle, resembling a quantum giant with a unified soul. The existence of this quantum giant inspired Josephson, a two two-year-old Cambridge graduate student. In 1962, he deduced that since the entire circuit is a giant, even if there is an insulating wall between two superconductors, this giant should be able to pass through the wall unharmed. This tiny structure, known as the Josephson Junction, was quickly proven and earned him the 1973 Nobel Prize. Theoretical physicist Leggett saw a bolder possibility from this. Could we create a macroscopic object that can pass through walls? He envisioned that, if a Josephson junction were placed in a specific circuit, the overall system would be like a small ball trapped at the bottom of an energy bowl. Classical physics stated that without sufficient energy, it would never flip over. But Leggett boldly predicted that this macroscopic ball should be able to pass through the bottom of the bowl undetected through quantum means. He named this macroscopic quantum tunneling. It was like throwing down a challenge to all physicists. Go and prove in the lab that what we can see can also do quantum tunneling. A dream team from UC Berkeley answered the call. Their advisor, John Clark, is experienced and meticulous. Postdoctoral fellow, Michael Diwali, is brilliant and creative. And graduate student, John Martinez, is skilled and tenacious. Their battlefield was a chip the size of a fingernail, etched with circuitry. Billions of electron pairs in the circuit start trapped in a low energy state, zero voltage. Capturing this quantum state and the leap it tunneled to a finite voltage state was the core of the experiment, but extremely difficult. Any excess heat or electromagnetic wave would act like a gentle breeze, prematurely blowing the ball out of the bowl, making it impossible to discern whether it escaped by brute force or truly mastered quantum penetration. To avoid noise, experiments often ran late at night. To prevent any heat or noise from disturbing the quantum state, they cooled the chip to near absolute zero. Beside a heavy metal shielded box, the three listened to the hissing of liquid helium in the cryogenic container, waiting for the appearance of that macroscopic quantum ghost. In 1985, dawn finally broke. After countless measurements, they observed that the circuit trapped in a zero voltage state would randomly jump to a finite voltage state. This escape probability remained unchanged at extremely low temperatures. This indicated that classical heat could no longer help it escape. It could only rely on its own quantum nature to pass through the wall. But that's not enough. To convince the world, they needed to prove that this macroscopic system, like an atom, possesses a quantum identity, a discrete, stepped energy level. So, they used microwaves of different frequencies to probe the trapped macroparticle. If it were an ordinary sphere, any frequency with enough energy could help it escape. But if it's a quantum sphere, its internal energy distribution is like a staircase. Only when the energy of the microwave is exactly equal to the height difference between two steps can it be absorbed, allowing the sphere to leap to a higher step and thus more easily pass through the wall. The results again confirmed the quantum prediction. Only certain specific microwave frequencies can cause an increase in the escape rate. This means that this macroscopic circuit, composed of billions of electrons, is not continuous, but rather has steps, like an atomic spectrum. Ultimately, they successfully enable the visible circuit to learn to breathe in a quantum manner. Thus, an artificial atom was born. For the first time, Schrodinger's speculative cat opened its quantum eye on a cold chip. 
It announced the arrival of a new era of using circuit design to tame quantum mechanics. Later, Dwarley jointly proposed the transmission qubit, which refined artificial atoms into the mainstream architecture of today's quantum computing. Martinis joined Google and led a team to achieve quantum supremacy in 2019. They built the Sycamore quantum processor. In about 200 seconds, it finished a task that would take a classical supercomputer 10,000 years. Although he eventually left the big company due to team discord, his quantum computer's dream soon continued in a new company. Mentor Clark applied the precise measurement techniques honed in the experiments to magnetoencephalogram, geological exploration, and even dark matter search. These tools created for other fields eventually gave back to quantum computing. They became essential for reading qubit states. In 2025, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to these three pioneers. Clark recalled that in the 1980s, they verified Leggett's prediction out of curiosity and never imagined this work would carry the weight of a Nobel Prize. He also emphasized that he was only the nominal leader. His two students' contributions stood out too much. Anyway, the three musketeers confirmed that quantum is a physical reality that can be engineered. The magic of quantum has not vanished. Rather, the world we live in is too hot and too noisy. In the grand symphony of the everyday world, those quantum solos have long been submerged and collapsed into the only definite classical reality we see. What we see is never the entire universe, but just its appearance after being observed amid the noise. The charm of science lies precisely in this. It gives us the power to block out the noise, to tune the channel, and in the silence near absolute zero, to hear the universe's original whisper. Conversely, when we're heated up by daily rush and pressure, what we often see are only the most realistic and classic options. If we can also cool ourselves down and block out the noise from the outside world, perhaps we can hear the most genuine superimposed state of self deep in our hearts, that true existence with infinite possibilities beyond all social roles and expectations.